Robin, okay, so you you were recently elected in, is it 2021 that you were elected to city council? No, this is January, January 3rd. Congratulations. Congratulations on your victory, yeah. which I know was was hard fought. And 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 tell me, you know, I I guess I want to talk about your award specifically, but I guess more specifically about Minneapolis. Um, mm-hmm. you know, this is the place where two years ago George Floyd was murdered. Mm-hmm. And um now two years later you have the murder of Amir Locke. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess I just sticking with the 2020 moment. What's been like the lasting impact? Um, we'll get to the police and politicians, but like, but just almost like culturally, like on a on a feeling level, like what, mm-hmm. how was the city and was the city forever changed after that moment? Yeah, and I will broaden it out from just the city, the world. I mean, the the public lynching by the Minneapolis Police Department of George Floyd literally happened in front of the world. The watch, the world watched as it happened. Um, and in the following days, the world also took up action. I mean, and of course, the site or, or the origin story happened here, but the world kind of followed suit where, you know, the uprising that would t- take place here um, in Minneapolis would then ripple all across the United States, making it, you know, one of the most historic civil rights um, you know, reckonings in U.S. history. And then that rippled across the world where we saw more than, uh, you know, dozens of actions in more than, I believe at that time, 50 plus countries. Um, and I think it, it signifies what we're even experiencing now with this response or with the, the pending decision around Roy ver- versus Wade. Um, it showed working class people just how powerful we are. Um and I say that because I know liberal, like, you know, philosophy and, and, and the, the, the framing of the events that transpired here, here in Minneapolis um, is, is not what <laughs> they don't want what actually took place here to, to be the act, actual truth. The fact that working class people, black and brown people, folks from all walks of life literally rose up in the streets by the the thousands and Mm -hmm. and not only demanded an end to the policing that led to the violent um, death of George Floyd, but a policing that constantly wreak havoc and terror on all of our lives. And not only did they say, you know, we need that to end. If you don't, shit is going to get real. And and, And to make sure you understand that, we're going over to this third uh, police precinct (laughs) and we're burning this bitch down. (laughs) And I know liberal, especially here, the Democrats uh, have done a really great um, job at painting um, this narrative that there were outside agitators that took over the third precinct that um, incited the riots. Um, And I want to say that is inherent and intentional whitewashing. While Mm. it's true that our city did have a dynamic where we saw outside agitators that were affiliated with white supremacist networks. Um, this, the events that happened on this ground was rooted in working class people's oppression and basically just their, their immense amount of, of frustration and just complete over it, like energy with that oppression that, you know, George Floyd's murder represented, but along with the, the COVID pandemic, the mismanagement of that, so many things of, that you already highlighted about, you know, that was the moment where racial capitalism was very clearly proven to be trash. Like we have this global pandemic where, you know, years ago you could have guaranteed universal health care so that everyone um, could have access to the healthcare uh, services and, and providers that they needed to weather this, that we could have had the treatments available to us to weather this. And instead, we allow millions of folks to die, not ho- only here in Minneapolis, I mean, in the U.S., but across the world. So you just saw on both ends under this trash ass system of racial capitalism, like the the colliding of, of racism and, and how mm-hmm. that intersects with policing, but also around like healthcare and, and, and our, our inability to have our basic needs met, be met. Like that yeah. just collided and it was an explosive force and working right. class people was like, fuck it. And we're saying that now, like exactly. once, <laughs> y'all want to yeah. say rights that we fought for decades ago. I fuck it. 
We're in the streets again. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think that we forget that that moment because we we want to forget because the pandemic has been just so taxing on all of us for many different reasons. But you're exactly right that you're like the the thing that really, obviously, a lynching in daylight in front of people. I mean, like that bone chillingness is already there. But on top of it, you're talking about a reduced, you know, uh, a moment of a pandemic, a reduced state. Like, oh, there's nowhere to be found. We can't even get a mask, a free mask, you know, to save our fucking lives. Literally, yeah, but y'all have a tank coming. But you've through. got a tank. But you've right. got some. Yeah, someone's knee on someone's neck over some a uh, well, uh, supposed counterfeit Nine bill. Minutes. Well, yeah. we, we saw the we just saw this a, two, a few days ago in Los Angeles. The is, is when people went out to protest the abortion rights, the police response was insane. And yeah. it's that's terrorism. It's like if we can't even go out and say that we don't agree with this and we don't want this, then we're not in that. That's not freedom. Like why mm -hmm. are our tax dollars paying for us to be pu pushed out of the street? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense yeah. to me. But it highlights the role of policing under a unjust system of racial capitalism. It's there to maintain the boundary between us, the peasants uh, whose rights are constantly under threat the ones who are constantly told we need to be civil to our very oppressors who attack our everyday needs and our everyday rights. The police helps to reinforce that boundary of us and the ruling elite. The ruling elite is the, the SCOTUS members who can make decisions about our lives. It's the, the politicians who align themselves with, you know, big pharma industries and healthcare industries. It's those who uh, are aligned with Jeff Bezos and make sure that his profits are straight. And police are there to keep us in check and, and to make sure we don't do what we're doing right now. What we did in 2020 in the wake of George Floyd is revolt against mm -hmm. those who make our days, our everyday lives, a living hell. They wake up every single day and choose violence mm -hmm. in the most insidious ways. And when we literally say that is violence, all I have, we ain't got no tanks. All I can do is just stand in the streets and say, stop. All I can do is show up to, uh, you know, the Capitol or the White House and be like, this is not right. We're then violent. We're abusive. <laughs> We're not, you know, handling things well. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it just illuminates the role of policing and shows actually who, who, where are the police is actually aligned with their interests. And I hope it's crystallized in this moment that in every so single historic social struggle in our country and across the world, the police has never joined the side of the right, of the no. oppressed, of those who, you know, civil liberties were, were under attack, who was being gassed. <laughs> like they were yeah. never on the right side of history. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.